Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series we'll be bringing to you over the coming weeks where we'll be exploring the capabilities within NX Render. We're going to be taking you through a typical workflow for Viz experts when taking complex CAD data sets through to stunning renders. The series of videos ties in with an existing blog series we've been running since around September 2020. We'll put the details up on the screen now if you want to check that out. We're going to be joined today by our Centre of Excellence in-house visualisation expert Gavin McCambridge. Gavin has more than 20 years in the visualization industry and knows the importance of composition when creating stunning images within an X-Render. We'll be discussing Gavin's typical approach to a new visualization project, offering expert tips and tricks to create the perfect render. So you've received the data set that you're working on. What's normally the first thing that you do with the model? Is it just a case of familiarizing yourself with it? Hi, Jamie, that's exactly it. Yes, um, the main thing to do is get yourself used to it, understand what you're looking at and look for any holes in the model, anything that's missing. So the way I commonly do this was we'll be fire up the actual model um, into NX and start looking through the assembly navigator, see how that's set up, how it's structured, uh, looking at the naming of everything, because obviously understanding that helps um, so that you can quickly identify certain sections of the model that you're going to be working on. Sounds really good, there, Gavin. Thank you very much. Um, and how do you go about researching the model that you'll be working on? Is there a specific place that you look for for all the information that you're going to need? I think there's there's different ways you can do this. The, the main one that I do is because of the way I work is I'll go and do an internet search. Now, a lot of the time for me, from from my role, um, the product might be already available or there might be similar ones to it. So that's where I can look. If you're doing something that's a concept design, something like that, you may want to look at, at similar products, similar things, how they're displayed, how they look. Um, also looking into the materials um, that this product might have and um, that kind of thing I, I, I often find very useful to do. Having a good knowledge of uh, what you're going to be working on, I think is is very important. Good stuff, really, uh, really engaging stuff that. Is there anything that you're specifically looking for when you're familiarising yourself with the model itself? Um, I, I think the, the main thing for me is is understanding what I'm, I'm working on. So, for instance, um, the, the last uh, blog series which we talked about was the JCB, the Fast Track, which is an extremely big model in the sense of, uh, in reality, this is a, a huge tractor. It's 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 massive and then now working on something that's a lot smaller like we're doing here which is consumer product uh, the coffee machine completely different scale so understanding the differences between them and how i'm going to be displaying these i think is very important and how important would you say it is to make sure that you're completely familiar with the model could you foresee any problems in your workflow later on if you don't feel completely familiar yeah, I, uh, for me, it's it's um, while I'm working on these things, I find that I work in isolation a lot. So what I'll do is I'll go through the assembly structure. I'll turn things off and on. Um, if if I want to identify a, a certain part, just to focus on that, to focus around it, uh, whether it's materials or um, I'm I'm looking at how that's is actually working within it. I can often spend quite a bit of time. So yeah, understanding that structure, hence going back to what I was saying at the start was uh, understanding that will speed you up in, in the sense of being able to turn stuff off and on as you uh, at will. Uh, for instance, like with this coffee maker, we, we've got um, the, the whole outer casing of the coffee maker is on one node of the assembly structure. We can turn that off and on quite quickly. So it, it, it just makes it um, a, a lot more focused and, and, and quicker for your workflow. Fantastic stuff. Am I right in suggesting that you may also need to do some form of cleanup on your model as well? Perhaps just tell us a little bit about that, you know, how you clean up your model and the importance that it plays in the rest of your workflow. Yeah, uh, th this is, is probably when you're starting out on any project, one of the most important things. So what you're looking for at this point is um, you're looking at are there any variant parts, are there any extra parts, are, are parts overlaid with others, just depending on how it's being constructed. Uh, it's something I'll spend a bit of time on um, after I've got familiar with it. And a lot of this will then be turning parts on and off, put, turning the nodes off in the structure on and off so that I can see what's going on. And then from then on, there's there's a bit of um, a, a kind of decision you have to make of whether you want to suppress the part. So if you don't want to see that part at all, you know, you don't want it to come back. Um, you can use suppression in it, which I found very interesting. Um, and then there's also that hiding. Now hiding is if you turn off 
parts of that node um, that are in there, part of the assembly in there. When you turn that whole assembly part back on, it, everything comes back on. So it's a case of suppression turns it off for good until you actually actively turn it back on. And then uh, hiding just gives you that kind of temporary kind of uh, hide to it. That's great. Thank you very much, Gavin. Um, last question from me. So is there anything else that you want to talk to us about when it comes to setting up your model at this stage? Yeah, there's 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 two things that I think are the most important for when I'm starting. Um, the first one is actually set up a VBOM of the the model, so a visual bill of materials. Um, what I'm after from this is it, it takes me from the uh, EBOM, which is the um, engineering bill of materials, to, um, to 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 having my own separate one. This doesn't in ha having this setup means that I can add, let's say for instance, cluster geometry. Uh, I'm I'm adding in objects to to help sort of animate the scene slightly. Um, to to add something to it, like with the coffee maker, we, we've added in some cups using real life shape, things like that. Whereas um, having that now in the V-bomb means it can be on a different part of the assembly, so it never actually goes into the E-bomb at all, and it doesn't cause any issues with that with that data. And then the second thing is that I I, I find one a really good approach to it is to have a very clear idea of what I want to achieve with it. What am I looking for? What's the image going to look like that I'm, I've got in my head, what I'm going to be doing at the end of it? And um, sort of working through that, understanding the bits that I need to create that, essentially. Um, composition is is massive for me. It's one of the, my sort of key um, sort of cornerstones in Fizz for me is, is making sure that that's right. And I do often spend quite a bit of time just get my head around what I want it to do, how I want it to look. So, yeah. Brilliant stuff that, Gavin. I uh, really appreciate you jumping on. Uh, the information that you've given is uh, really insightful, and I'm sure our viewers will really, uh, really engage with that too. Um, for all you guys listening, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for tuning in. Um, this is going to be a running series, which is going to run in line with the NX Render Blog series, which we mentioned. So every time we release a, a blog post, uh, a couple of weeks after we're going to release this um, this video too. So keep your eyes peeled for the next episode, which will be part two. Thank you very much. And Gavin, thanks again. Uh, and I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. Thanks. Bye. Bye.